Continuing with chemical equilibrium, we will learn what Lee Shackley is principle is. So the definition of Lee Shackley's principle is when a system with equilibrium is disturbed, the system will respond by shifting the equilibrium in the direction that minimizes this disturbance. So what are the ways a chemical equilibrium be disturbed? So in this case it is chemical equations. Number one is addition or removal of a substance. Number two, change in pressure or volume. And the third, change in temperature. Let us see how each one of these affects the equilibrium. Let's see how addition or removal of a substance affects an equilibrium. So consider our own reaction, nitrogen plus hydrogen giving you ammonia. The equilibrium constant of the reaction is also given next to it. So for this reaction, so we have to see if I remove a product or a reactant, how will it get affected? For example, if I add a reactant, say if I add more of nitrogen, it's quite obvious that the reaction has to proceed in such a way to decrease this increased nitrogen. In that case, the reaction will definitely go towards the product. Therefore, more of this excess nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to give me ammonia. Therefore, addition of a reactant will give me the, will shift the equilibrium towards the product. Similarly, if I remove a product, the equilibrium will shift towards the product because I am removing it. So, I need more of it. So, it's quite obvious, removal of product will shift the equilibrium towards the product. Now, addition of a product. When I add a product, this has to, the reaction has to go in the reverse direction to decrease this addition. And, uh, the same thing applying for the removal of a reactant also. In order to counteract the removed reactant, the reaction will shift towards the reactant and more nitrogen and hydrogen will be formed. So in all these cases, it is only the concentration which changes and therefore the ratio of the concentrations will remain same. That means that the value of Kc, the equilibrium constant will remain the same. Now let's see how the change in pressure and volume will affect the equilibrium of a reaction. And I'll consider the same reaction, nitrogen and hydrogen giving you ammonia. So if I increase the pressure, there isn't anything in that equation which is related to, which directly tells what pressure is. But from ideal gas law or from the definition of pressure, we know that pressure is actually the number of moles hitting the wall of a container. Or in other words, pressure is directly related to the number of moles. So if pressure increases, means number of moles is increasing. So quite obvious that if in case of pressure, as the moles increases, the reaction will proceed into that direction where the number of moles is less. And therefore, increase in pressure will shift the equilibrium to that direction where the number of moles is less. So in this case, I have 4 moles on the reactant side and 2 moles on the product side. Therefore, increase in pressure will favor the forward reaction. So whatever we set for uh, pressure, the opposite is true for volume. Uh, because pressure and volume are inversely related according to the ideal gas law. And therefore, if I increase the pressure, the volume will decrease. So a decrease in volume will inc uh, means I have only less uh, volume now, therefore it can accommodate only less moles. Therefore the equilibrium will shift towards the side where the number of moles is less. So here also the reaction is going from reactant to product. It is only the concentrations are changing but the ratio will remain the same and therefore value of Kc will be the same and in spite of all these changes. And uh, one more thing to be taken care in this case is if the number of moles is same on both sides. So this is an example there is there I have 4 moles on the reactant side and 2 moles on the product side. You can come across reactions in which the number of moles is same on both sides. In that case pressure has got no effect on the equilibrium. Or in other words change in pressure and change in volume has no effect on the equilibrium. Now the third change we have to learn is how the how will change in temperature affect an equilibrium. Before that, let us just know the symbols of how an exothermic reaction and an endothermic reaction can be represented. 
An exothermic reaction can be uh, represented in one of the three ways given below. Either they can say heat is released or to the reaction they can add plus heat to the product sign or they can say that delta H is negative. An endothermic reaction is the opposite of all these. It will say that the heat is absorbed or the heat will be added to the reactant or delta H will be positive. With this as the base, now we will go further and learn how change in temperature affects the equilibrium. So now let's consider how change in temperature affects an exothermic reaction. So if I increase the temperature in this reaction, nitrogen plus hydrogen giving ammonia is an exothermic reaction, I am increasing the temperature. So to counteract this increase, the reaction should go in that direction where the temperature is less. And obviously, if I have plus heat on the product side, the reaction has to go towards the reactant. And therefore, the, reaction, the equilibrium sh will shift towards the reactant. And this is a case in which any change in temperature will affect the equilibrium constant. In the previous two cases, I said that equilibrium constant remains the same. But equilibrium constant is dependent only on temperature. And since the equilibrium is shifting towards the reactant, the reactants are increasing and therefore the value of Kc will decrease. And applying the same thing to an endothermic reaction, it uh, consider the hydrogen plus iodine and the heat is added to the reactant side, therefore it is an endothermic reaction. Any increase in temperature will favor the forward uh, reaction that is the equilibrium will shift towards the product and since more product is formed the value of Kc will increase. So you should be very careful in case of temperatures there will be a change in the value of equilibrium constant. In all these cases change in pressure, temperature, volume and uh, <coughs> removal or addition of a product or a reactant do not memorize any of the actions. Just remember that if I increase something, that has to decrease. That is the basic principle of Lee Chatelier's principle. If that is clear, you can handle any questions given in any form. Let's do one example of uh, application of Lee Chatelier's principle. For the reaction given below, for each of the conditions given, predict which way the equilibrium will shift. The reaction given is NOBr giving you NO plus Br2 and it is given delta H0 equals 30 kilojoules per mole. That means this is an endothermic reaction. So the first thing they are asking is what will happen when I add NOBr. Uh, NOBr, I am adding a reactant. Therefore, the equilibrium will shift towards the product. The second question is a removal of NO. I am removing a product. Therefore, the equation will again, equilibrium will again shift towards the product. Increase in pressure. This is a reaction in which I have 3 moles on the product side and 2 moles on the reactant side. Therefore, increase in pressure will shift the equilibrium towards the reactant. And increase in volume. Same way, uh, that is that means I am decreasing the pressure. For the equilibrium will shift towards the product. And the increase in temperature is an endothermic reaction. Therefore, equilibrium will shift towards the product. And decrease in temperature, definitely it is the opposite of the previous one. Equilibrium will shift towards the reactant. In case of increasing the temperature, Kc will increase. And in case of decreasing the temperature, Kc will decrease. 